Hi, some tech simulationers. Uh, this is a new thing for us is going to be a product reviews on Techie TV, a one stop shop for simulation tech. We hope you like them. What we intend to do is give a comprehensive review on a product that we've managed to get our hands on um, and have a play with. Our Either we've got it in the centre or a rep's lent it to us for a while. We also then intend to uh, get a medical professional that would actually be using this product to see what they think of it from their point of view and hopefully give it a non biased review from a tech point of view. So, how well it works, how it how easy it is to use, um, how expensive it is, how expensive the placement parts are, how whether it actually does what it says it does on a tin, box, bag, whatever it comes in. Just a quick reminder to remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not already um, and if you want to get notifications please click the bell below um, and then you'll get notifications on when, when we release new videos. I'm Paul from Trent Simulation Centre in Nottingham. Uh, one of the techs here uh, that looks after setting up the rooms, um, putting out kit, setting up the kit, making sure the kit works and everything like that. I also get involved with um, having to buy things, so we need to know what works and what doesn't work. And often the time is that uh, you have to make a snap decision on what you're going to buy and just make the, the choice without any massive amount of uh, background knowledge whether you know whether the kit does what it needs to do and, and no chance to actually get hold of it, try it and use it before you have to buy it. Hopefully these videos will, will help uh, this process for everybody. Um, so you can have a look on here, see what we think of the kit, see how expensive it is, what the alternatives are and make your choice based on that rather than just having to make a, a snap decision and go for something and hope it does what you intend it does. And especially with having a medic's point of view that you get to see not from just a technical point of view, but from a, a end user. So on to today's review, we've got iSimulate ALSI. If you haven't seen our unboxing of it, click up here in the links and also have a look in the descriptions below. Medical simulation as you've never seen it, built off technology you use every day. This product is basically a uh, patient monitor, so it comes with two iPads, one iPad Pro for actually visualising it, and then a iPad uh, just to uh, change the settings on it. It comes also with a bag, um, a router inside it to so you can talk between the two of them, and that's basically it. You turn on the iPad turn on, and connect the iPad Pro to it, change your settings and away you go. You are able not to have the entire package, so if you've already got iPads in, in your center or anything like that, you can just go ahead and get the software by itself, um, which obviously makes things a lot cheaper. So it's semi-customizable uh, to an extent. Um, you can also get the software from the company just for a short trial, just to see whether it is something you like, so try before you buy as such. Um, but that's something you have to sort out with them. Um, so basically roughly worked out what the cost is. So the total cost for the entire thing, as you see here on the table, is a 6850, uh, excluding the AT and uh, carriage. Um, so it's not cheap, at seven grand, give or take. Um, but it is a good, good bit of kit, and it does what it says it does, and it's reliable. So it's, it's again, one money you have and what you want to be able to do with it. Works out if you want to roughly cost costings for it so the iPad Pro around 900 pounds the iPad itself uh, is around 450 pounds both come with cases the iPad inside has a little strap out that you can put over your hand so you can hold it when you're using it which makes it nice comfortable for use there's extension cables power cables inside it there's the router itself which is about 150 quid um, oh, about 180 quid sorry um, which allows the two to connect to each other. And then you've obviously got the outer case, obviously it's branded up to being I, I simulate and it has all the SATS probes and DFib pads and everything in it, which you don't need, 
but it's nice as it's a self-contained little package. So it's not cheap, but it does have a lot of functionality. So don't dismiss it straight away just because it's too expensive, but it all does depend on how much money you have in your budget to be able to buy it. It's easy to pick up. Um, we've literally handed it to clinicians and doctors and they've literally been able to pick it up. You show them how to activate it. So literally setting it, pressing the activate, and then they're, they're good to go. And pretty much that's all the instruction you need to give them. You are able to build pre-customized uh, scenarios, so if you um, know how the scenario is going to run, you can preset all that. So you can have X-rays come up on screen. You can have 12 leads, any pictures or anything you need to put on there, patient notes or anything. You, you can add all those into it after. It takes a little bit of time to build all these these things up, but once they're on there, it's as easy as anything to do. Um, you have also have a couple of um, quick jump things that you can program yourself down, down the side which allows you to um, quickly jump it into AF or asystole or back into sinus again if, if you need to do that quickly or you can do it over a set period of time so it happens progressively. These are, all can be uh, reported and logged if you want to do them for assessments type of sort of thing um, so you can collate them all together at the end if that's the type of thing you want to do. Obviously it's completely independent to anything else so you don't need to use it with a specific mannequin. Um, it can be used with a real life actor or a mannequin you have on the bed but if you're using it obviously with a high fidelity mannequin you need to be aware that you'll have to marry the two results up because obviously this will be different to what your high fidelity mannequin is, is saying. Though you can use it with a low fidelity mannequin and then give it some uh, monitoring, which it wouldn't have normally to make it into a more high fidelity simulation. There are other kits available out there which are a, a, do a similar sort of thing. Um, we'll hopefully do reviews on these at a later point. Uh, so the first one to mention is True Monitor. It's from the company True Corp. Uh, the price on this one is around two and a half thousand pounds. Um, similar sort of thing. Two iPads controlling one monitor. Um, the software itself is the two grand, and then you have to buy the additional pads with it. So it doesn't come like a package like this with the whole iPads and the router inside and the um, the defibs and sats probes and all that kind of stuff so it is cheaper because of that hence why this is more expensive from Laddle, um which is the sim pad which you can use with their leap software um, so again if you've got this type of thing in the center already it's not a problem so you have the sim pad which you can link up to a virtual monitor uh, using the, one of the link boxes and then control the monitoring from there um, the pricing on this one the sim pad itself if you so if you to buy it from the get-go with nothing else so you're looking at um, so a simpad plus is around 14 1400 uh, the screen so a screen for a monitor would be another 1400 type sort of thing link box 500 quid at the time we had to get a license from led themselves which might be additional cost I've not tried this for a while since they've updated the uh, sim pad so this may not be an issue anymore um, so for that sort of cost, you're still looking at around the sort of four or five thousand pound mark. So around the same sort of thing, but it will integrate with the high fidelity mannequins, and it may be kit you've already got around. There's other extremely low cost versions. Just an app on the app, Apple App Store, just called Simmon, and this is literally I think it's about a twenty two pound app. Obviously, you'll need access to a, a a tablet or something like that so that you can display the data um, so if you were to add it up again the pricing would go up because of this um, this is a nice cheap easy app to use uh, again we'll try and get hold of that one and have, get a review on it but enough about other products uh, back to i simulates lsi so there's no worry about updating the actual app itself so obviously it updates via the app store so when there's new updates all you need to do is update the app as you would do any apple device obviously once you get this product from the company you'll need to make sure that you, uh, you get the Apple ID they've assigned it to um, and any other passwords or anything that they've set it all up with which they're more than happy to give you. So the product literally came straight out of this box ready to go, we pulled it out, turned it on as you'll see in the unboxing video in the description um, and it worked straight off the bat, worked fine, had no issues with it whatsoever. So we've used it on a couple of simulations and stuff now. We've used it in practice as well as just playing it around with it at the center. We've had generally no issues with it whatsoever. The only kind of issues we have had have been related around the, uh, the router. Um, this may be because it's 
in the hospital setting where we've got other wireless equipment which are interfering with it. I've not had a chance to have a look at the router itself yet to see whether we can change the channel um, to see whether it's on the same frequency as the hospital ones so that we can get it, move it away from that so it has less issues connecting. Because we had this issue with it dropping out, we ended up putting the router uh, in between where the candidates were and where the faculty were so that it was literally midway between the two points and we had no issues after it after that because it and if it did ever drop out they all they did was move slightly closer to it and it reconnected um, so this is something that we is a potential issue but it's probably a simple fix of just changing the channel on the uh, the router because it's a, a decent uh, router inside it and there's no reason that it shouldn't be able to go over a, a larger distance the other issue is that because they're both iPads they don't uh, generate their own wireless area so it has to have that router to work. Uh, you can run it from um, a mobile device doing a hotspot which, I, which I've tried before and does work. Uh, we've also run it connecting to the uh, high fidelity mannequins um, router itself so connecting it to that so they're both on the same network and then again it works fine. Doing this hotspot thing also allows you then to make this completely wireless so at the moment you need to make sure that there is power going to the router inside so that the two devices can talk to each other otherwise you, it won't work. No major quibbles with the software itself, there's a couple of things that, that that you could change to make it a little flow a little bit nicer but they're really just little little things like having to press more than once just to uh, move an item around but they're rather little quibbles rather than anything major um, they are also releasing a major update i've been told in the summer um, which will change the layout and look of it to uh, more closely match their other products which is the reality 360 which is about twice or three times the price of this thing is about £14,000 but the software will then look very similar to it and it will hopefully add more skins to it because at the moment it only comes with a few sort of skins for the defib and the different screens that it has rather than being able to have uh, multiple uh, skins so for the different um, defibs that are out there which the Reality360 does. Uh, when the update to this software comes out we'll, have, we'll do a review on that to see what the differences are and whether it's actually better or worse because sometimes updates don't always make things better. So overall it is a really good product, uh, we haven't had any issues with it and every time we've had any issues we, or not known how to do something we can contact the uh, company and they, they get back to us really quickly on how to use the product. Um, we like it, it's usable. So that's our view on it, um, so let's see what the, uh, the medics and people that have to use it in practice think of it. Hi there, my name's Laura, I'm the clinical trainer here at the Trent Simulation Centre. Um, so I just want to talk to you um, about some of the features of ALSI that I found really useful when we've been working clinically. Um, so we've used this when we've been running our in situ simulation programme and one of the great things about this is how easy it is to control, um, not just for uh, us as faculty but also for our candidates and how easy it is to interact with. Um, so we had already set up some simulations beforehand um, and we're using some tech that allowed us to control um, the blood pressure and the vital signs um, already pre-programmed but actually this is a lot easier because we can also send our uh, results to this screen as well so actually in terms of portability um, uh, to be able to simulate literally anywhere it's all now on one system which is great so it is literally a case of turn up plug in and press go to play we'll just go through how easy it is actually for it it to work well um, so as you can see i've pressed go and for once it's not working <laughs> so this is the only problem we've actually entailed um, is that the connectivity is not working oh, i've right. got a red flash inside <laughs> So after that technical hitch of the router, um, we'll just show you what I think is great about it. So uh, it is literally a case of click a scenario um, and select it, press go. Um, so as the candidate, they can literally just turn this on like they turn on a normal piece of monitoring kit. 
um, and then it's really easy to decide whether or not you want any of the um, vitals on the s screen or not. So actually, in terms of having to connect your monitoring to your mannequin or your simulated patient, um, it kind of helps immerse the candidates a bit. Um, so it's a, in terms of making sure that uh, you've then connected the monitoring and as a facilitator you, you're displaying what you want. Um, you can even control the sound, that's one of the negatives actually. It's a bit loud to begin with, um, but you can turn that down remotely or even off, which is quite useful. Um, so the other great thing about this is actually when you press to check the blood pressure, um, it actually does make the sound like it does in real life, um, which is quite useful. Um, and then the other great thing about this is you can customise what other um, kind of options you want to um, display in the bottom. So for example, we've kit this up for our normal ward setting. Um, so instead of having to pretend or um, go and check with a facilitator what the BM and the temperature is, we can just display that on the screen. Um, and the other great thing about this is um, that we can send the results and things and x-rays so actually it's all in one place um, so it is literally as easy as a click so um, for example if we want to send an ABG across and um, we can share that and that's on their scrape straight away and then they can get rid of it um, and then they can also we put in results from bloods that they might have already had taken um, and they can be displayed on there as well um, but the great thing is, is if you've then got other colleagues coming into the simulation, so either a senior or another member of staff who wants to review those investigations, it's really easy for them to select and access those again. Um, the one thing that I really like about this in terms of a facilitator is that you can change uh, the vitals and select the time over that happens and just let it run but the system actually tells you um, how long you've got left because the screen changes from blue to orange so that's a really good cue um, so for example we'll drop the saturations and increase the heart rate and we'll do that over 20 30 seconds um, and you'll just see on the iPad that it changes really quickly um, and it's really easy to see when that's happened. Um, the other thing that we've not used yet but I think would be quite useful, um, especially if you've only got one facilitator, um, is marking, you can mark when certain events have happened. So for example, um, when they've uh, attached monitoring or when they've asked a specific question or uh, when they've completed an investigation, such as an ABG or asked for a chest x-ray. Um, so that's really useful if you then want to be able to collate that for your debriefing and then just check yourself what's happened. Um, so yeah, that's the great thing I like about this. So as you'll now see, 30 seconds have passed, the monitoring's changed, um, and if we turn the sound back on, um, you'll hear that there's an alarm function, which is actually really similar to normal clinical practice as well. Um, so yeah, so that's the things that I found really useful about it. So just to summarise, it's extremely portable. Um, everything that you would need, including being able to display observations, but also results, um, you can do that all on one screen um, and the the actual um, interface of being able to change those and send those is really really easy um, and I suppose the only negative that I found so far has has been demonstrated is the um, connectivity with the router. Thanks for sticking with us. Um, if there's anything else you kind of want to put, us to put in the video, please let us know in the, uh, the comments below and we'll try and get them included in the next video we make or do a specific thing on how to use the product or something like that. It, just, just let us know in the comments below. Again, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed, uh, get the notifications on and uh, let us know how, how, what you think of the video in the comments beneath. Thank you very much for watching.